check in on Michigan State and Nebraska. This is the drive you need to know. Nebraska's down five, final minute of the game. Jordan Westerkamp with a huge catch. 33-yard gain as Nebraska is rolling. Next play is a first and ten. Armstrong throws to the end zone. Arjun Colquhoun has it for the interception until he hits the ground. That would have ended the game right there. Instead, Mark D'Antonio and company still have to stop the drive. The next play, Armstrong looks on the left side of the screen for Brandon Riley, who catches the ball for the score. However, it looks like Riley steps out of bounds by himself. The refs say he was forced out. Nebraska wins 39-38. to Here's the post-game reaction on mostly that controversial call at the end. Well, we really thought initially it was going to be ruled out of bounds, so we were getting ready for another play from about the 30-yard line is what we were actually preparing for. And then we were actually surprised when they signaled touchdown. And then, and then I think that they were reviewing uh, whether or not he actually caught the ball in bounds, but that didn't even appear to be close. Uh, so uh, that's, that was how it kind of came down. I got an explanation. Yeah, they said they, the receiver was pushed out of bounds. No, everybody saw the replay. So that's, I'm not quite, you know, that's not my job. My job is to coach. I'm going to do the very best I can. That's somebody else's job. Bill Carollo is the Big Ten coordinator of officials. He joins us now to help clarify. So uh, let me make sure I have this straight. The officials ruled that Nebraska receiver Brandon Riley was forced out of bounds. Because they ruled that way, they can't review whether or not he actually was forced out of bounds, correct? Yes, the ruling on the field by the field judge was there was contact, and that contact put the receiver out of bounds. And that element uh, when it goes to replay is not reviewable. The severity of the contact is not reviewable. So it could be a very slight bump, it could be a hand check, or it could be an overt block out of bounds. But that degree of it is not. However, when it does go to replay, the replay official can determine was there contact. Once he realized by indisputable video evidence that there was hand contact there, he, that play becomes non-reviewable. However, the reality is if there was indisputable video evidence that there was no contact whatsoever, beyond all doubt, then we could have overturned that play uh, for illegal touching of the pass and made it uh, lost it down at the previous spot. So when they did go to the review, though, clarify what they could and could not look at when they did officially go to that review. Yeah, the replay official looked at three different things. Number one, was there indisputable video evidence that there was, con was contact or not contact by the opponent onto the receiver? So that's the first thing they looked at. The second thing that they looked at was once that receiver was out of bounds, did he come back in bounds and reestablish himself in the field of play? He has to have a body part back in bounds. And then the third thing is once he caught the pass, did he catch it? And then when he did go to the ground, did he maintain possession of that ball once he went to the ground? So there were multiple elements he looked at. That's why it took, uh, you know, the, the normal replay review. But the actual severity of the contact by the opponent that put him out of bounds is not a reviewable play. Now, you did say early that there was no indisputable evidence that there was zero contact. However, some people are saying if you look at the video, it's hard to really say he did clearly get pushed out of bounds. So give me the, the macro reason of why it's in the rule books that something like that is not able to be overturned on review. Yeah, great question. Because the judgment and decisions of this nature, just like pass interference, uh, holding, etc., those types of plays with, with judgment involved, we, we uh, reserve that judgment with the officials on the field. We don't transfer uh, or reofficiate the play upstairs in the replay booth based on judgment. So that's a, uh, a type of play that we'd rather have that judgment. We feel the officials in the, uh, on the field are in the best position to make that call. Bill Carollo, Big Ten Coordinator of Officials, we appreciate your time and your explanations. Thank you. Thanks, Mike.